welcome to this overview of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verses 13 through 59. How then shall we live? We are still in the fifth section of the Gospel, Jesus' journey to death, showing messianic signs and teaching. Jesus had earlier revealed that he was soon to depart out of the world for some time, now teaching how to live between his first and his second comings. We shall deal with this section under five titles, Jesus' advice for the public, his advice for disciples or followers, advice for everyone, more advice for disciples, and more advice for the public. Advice for the public. God against all kinds of greed. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Now when Jesus asked, Who made me an arbitrator? He may have been using humor. What is an inheritance? It is to distribute possessions according to cultural or legal rules upon the death of the possessor. Greed is to desire more or to seek more than what one needs or already possesses. Proverb 13.22 reads, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. How could he do so if he had sold everything and given away the money? So what shall I do? He told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, What shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Now he had a surplus. What are some biblical examples of abundant harvests? Think of the seven-year harvest in Egypt. And what ought to be done with surplus harvest? How could it be invested to help the poor? Or to provide for the future? Beware of this danger. Low-priced food brought to local markets can destroy small farmers' livelihood. Be careful when giving away large amounts of food. Then said he, This is what I shall do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store my surplus grain. Then I shall say to myself, You have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. Now, what was this man's sin? But God said to him, You fool! This very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with those who store up things for themselves, but are not rich towards God. A fool is anyone who lacks prudence or good judgment. He is foolish or ignorant. What is every rich man's main concern about his inheritors? How might they waste his wealth? The scripture says, What use is money in the hand of a fool, since he has no intention of acquiring wisdom? Jesus' advice for his disciples or followers about worry. Then said Jesus to his disciples, 
Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? On material wealth, Jesus said to avoid becoming greedy. Greek philosophers used to say, we should acquire what we need and seek no more. Cynics chose to own nothing. The Jewish Essene community practiced communal sharing. The Apostle Paul later would advise Christians to be content with food and cover. Historically, Europeans chose to conquer and to exploit colonies. Asians generally exploit labor for national wealth, whilst Americans exploit the world's resources. Africans, however, seek to ensure each one's fair share. Your father knows what you need. God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire. How much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it, for the pagan world runs after all such things, whilst your father knows that you need them. Discuss this query. In what ways have we learned from the world to worry about our material needs? And then, what is the fundamental Christian value related to meeting material needs? Thirdly, what are some other basic human needs that ensure survival and health? Then, what shall we do about lazy Christians? The scripture says, If anyone is not willing to work, then let him not eat for a while. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Every flock has a shepherd. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Who in Scripture sold their excess possessions and gave the money to feed the poor? Think of the early Christians in Acts chapters 2, 3, and 4. And which possessions were Israelites not allowed to sell? Remember, Jesus was speaking to Israelites. They were never to sell the family farm or the family home. The Son of Man will come. Understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. What current events require that Jesus return sometime soon? None. The promise remains, however, that the Son of Man will come. Jesus often employed this title to himself in relation to his second coming. However, it will happen at an hour when you do not expect him. Hour, according to the lexicon, is a point of time as an occasion for an event, not merely 60 minutes. Jesus also gave advice for everyone about a faithful, wise manager. Peter asked, Lord, are you telling this parable to us or to everyone? The Lord answered, Who then is the faithful and wise manager whom the master puts in charge of his servants to give them their food and allowance at the proper time? 
it will be good for that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. Truly, I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. What does this parable teach us about life in the kingdom of God after Jesus' return? How will we be rewarded? How can many persons all be in charge of all Jesus' possessions? How can all be in charge of all? If Jesus has millions of faithful servants, then how could he put them all in charge of all his possessions? Well, possibly, each one will be in charge of a small part. Or, Jesus was speaking of himself, since he is the faithful servant of Yahweh God. Or perhaps he was employing hyperbole. Maybe we believers are collectively the good servant, in contrast with the wicked generation that rejected him. The servant who knows the master's will and does not get ready, or does not do what the master wants, will be beaten with many blows. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. There are those who know his will and do his will, and those who know his will and do not do it. The abiding principle is this. Godly judgment must be as merciful as justice allows, and no harsher than what justice requires. More advice for disciples. I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo, and what constraint I am under until it is completed. Fire is an ancient symbol for end times judgment against the wicked, and Jesus will one day bring that fire. Baptism is also an ancient rite symbolizing cleansing from sin or from evil. Since Jesus did no evil and had no sin, from what must he be cleansed? Scripture affirms he took upon himself our sins and he suffered on our behalf, cleansing us from all sin. Division do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on, there will be five in one family divided against each other. They will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Why no mention of son-in-law? Well, at this time in history, the people practiced patrilocal marriage, when brides usually came to dwell with their husband's family. Anthropologists ask, was ancient society matrilocal? For Genesis affirmed, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife. Division. This implies disagreements, but over what? So, how could we minimize family discord over faith in Jesus, rather than evangelizing individuals who must then suffer persecution from their families, seek to evangelize entire families who may come to faith in Jesus together? And more advice for the public. Learn to interpret the times. Jesus said to the crowd, When you see a cloud rising in the west, immediately you say, It's going to rain, and it does. And when the south wind blows, you say, It's going to be hot, and it is. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. How is it that you do not know how to interpret this present time? How do you not interpret? Ancient manuscripts differ. Some read, How do you not interpret? Whilst others ask, 
How do you not know how to interpret? It seems that either scribes inserted to know, to conform to the preceding clause, you know how, or they omitted the word to heighten Jesus' criticism. Clouds from the west came from over the Mediterranean Sea and were normally laden with moisture, bringing rain, whereas winds from the south carried hot air from the Arabian desert. So, how could folk in Jesus' day have better interpreted the time? By what signs? The Qumran community cited corruption in the temple system as a sign of Messiah's soon coming, whereas some other rabbis calculated his coming according to Daniel's seven weeks of years. More to the point, Jesus was doing the works of the Messiah. Visit the website cited here to see a chart on nine interpretations of Daniel's 70 weeks, most of which bring us near to the time of Jesus' birth or to his crucifixion. Many prefer to count the 70 weeks from King Artaxerxes' decree for Ezra to return to Judea in 458 BCE, from which 70 weeks of years extended to the year 33 CE, when Jesus was crucified and rose from death. The adversary at the time was likely a creditor demanding repayment of a money loan. A magistrate could be any social or religious leader. A judge then, one with authority to decide the verdict and its consequence. An officer was a bailiff in charge of a local jail. So, discuss this. Why did Jesus tell this illustration? What did it mean to his hearers? Until you've paid the last penny? Discuss together. Can one's relatives pay money to get him out of hell? So, what did you discover from these passages? What truths could you affirm? What promises could you claim? Which commands will you obey? Your assignment for next time is to read Luke chapter 13 through 14 verse 14, and then visit the website for other materials. Whilst you read in different versions, compile your insights, queries, and observations to share with others.